Hi, this video is about why did Jesus breathe on his disciples? Hi, I'm Bake Adafi, and this is Bible study verse by verse. If you'd open your Bible to John chapter 20, we'll begin in just a moment. John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus gives understanding through the Holy Spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Just a, bur a word about man's ability to understand God without the Holy Spirit. It doesn't exist. Man can't understand God without the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says it like this. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So a natural person, a person without Christ, a person that's born into the world, born in their sins, and live in their sins, and they, they like it there, that kind of person does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They don't understand who Jesus is. They don't understand God. Everything about that appears to be to them foolishness. They can't know them. They are, that Those things are spiritually discerned. They are not spiritual. They cannot receive it. They do not understand it. That's the natural case of a person who's born into the world. John 3, 19 through 20 says it like this. And this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. That's the Lord Jesus. He lights up the world. Lights come into the world. Jesus has come. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light that his deeds should be reproved. They don't like the light. They don't like the Lord Jesus. They want to live in their sins. They love the darkness. They don't want the light to flood into them. It's foolishness to them. They can't know it. They love the darkness, and they don't like the light. John 6, 44 says, No man can come to me, Jesus says, except the Father, which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. How do you get to God? You don't get there on your own steam because your mind is closed toward God. It's foolishness to you. You don't want to know it. You like the darkness that you live in. And unless God draws you, if you're hearing this message and it's beginning to crack open into your mind and you're beginning to understand it, that's the drawing of God. That's the way he works. He uses his word. His Holy Spirit takes the word and begins to crack the shell away from you down to where your heart and soul are so you can hear who he is. And that's the work of the Father, drawing people to himself through the Son. Then John chapter 3, verse 6 through 8 that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So a natural person born of the world is born of the flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. It takes a spiritual birth to come into God's kingdom. That's why Jesus is saying this in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus. You must be born again. Nicodemus doesn't get it. Later, Nicodemus gets saved. He helps bury the Lord Jesus. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Here's how it happens. John chapter 3, verse 8. The wind, which is the Holy Spirit... He's making an, an analogy here. The wind blows where it lists. Jesus is going to breathe on these disciples. That's what he's doing. He's giving them the Holy Spirit. He's giving them understanding. The wind blows where it lists, where it desires, where it wants to go. And you hear the sound thereof, but you can't tell where it came from, and you can't tell where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. It's like the wind. You see the wind move the leaves in the tree. You don't know where the wind came from. Don't know where it's going next, but it's there in the tree. And that's the way the Lord Jesus explains how the Spirit brings life to people. He comes, and He gives life, and He moves on. That's what He does. It comes from Him. That's why Jesus is breathing on them. He's opening their minds. He's giving them understanding of who he is and what the message is and, and understanding the scripture. An example of this is in Acts chapter 16, verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, this is when Paul is preaching, he's out on his missionary journey, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. He's hear, they're hearing Paul preach. And whose heart the Lord opened that she attended to things which were spoken by Paul. How did she attend? How, how did she receive it? The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness unto him. He can't know him. They're in darkness and love it. Lydia's heart was opened. God opened her heart. 
No man can come unto me except the Father that sent me. Draw him, the Lord Jesus says. That which is born of flesh of flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit of spirit is spirit. Jesus is giving them understanding. He's breathing the Holy Spirit in. Those minds that were closed off to the Old Testament and what it meant and all the prophecies about him and how he fulfilled all those things is now being opened up to them. He is uh, receiving the Holy Ghost so that they can uh, do the message, do, do the mission that he has for them uh, by the Spirit of God. We see this on the day of Jesus' resurrection on the road to Emmaus. We've already talked about the two guys that are walking and they're sad and they're going away. And it's uh, Luke 24, uh, verse 15 and 16 says, And it came to pass, while they communed and reasoned together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were held that they should not know him. So Jesus is resurrected and he's walking with them and they don't know who he is. I mean, they would have known him before his death, but now their eyes are held. And he talks with them, they go in and they eat. And it came to pass, we already read this, verse 20. Four, verse 30 through 31 as he sat with me to them he took bread he blessed it he broke it he gave it to them their eyes were opened and they knew him and then he vanished out of their sight so their eyes were closed at the beginning of their meeting at the end of the meeting their eyes are opened how did this happen he gave them understanding he gave them his spirit understanding who God is comes from the Holy Spirit of God Luke's account of this same time that the disciples are being breathed on by the Lord Jesus uh, gives it a different flavor. He gives it a different, uh, different take on it. In Luke chapter 24, verse 44 and 45, he said to them, Jesus in the, has appeared in the room. He's talking to them. He said to them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That's when he blew on them. That's when he breathed on them. He opened their mind. They can understand the scriptures now. It makes sense to them. At this point, Jesus breathes on them. They receive the Holy Spirit and their understanding is open. The reception of the, of the Holy Spirit and understanding who God is go hand in hand. This is how come a person gets born again. The Holy Spirit brings repentance and faith and new life and a new birth. And he does it as he wills, breathes on you, he comes into your life. Your body becomes the temple of God and you understand the things of God and you have faith in Christ. And no one will ever pluck you out of the Father's hand then. Jesus is the power to serve, the authority to act. Through him, the disciples will proclaim the gospel message of forgiveness of sins or retention of sins. In the creation, in the beginning of the world, God breathed into man the breath of life, Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord formed man out of the dust of ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. How did this happen? Same idea, the breathing of God into the person and giving them life. Life comes from him. God is the source of life. Jesus is the source of life. My Father has life in himself and he's given to me to have life in myself. Jesus breathes on them and he gives them the Holy Spirit. There's life that comes into them. Man sinned then and, and died in um, Genesis chapter 3. The breath of God left. The Spirit of God left them. That's what spiritual death is. They would die some 900 years later physically but spiritually they died toward God and everyone that is has sprung from them born into the world is born with that spiritual death and here in John chapter 20 verse 22 the Holy Spirit brings life he brings understanding he brings power he brings authority from the breath of the risen Lord Jesus Christ the disciples minds are opened Luke 24, 45 says, And he opened their understanding. That's the breath of the Lord Jesus, that they might understand the scriptures. That's the Holy Spirit in them. This is the point in which Jesus gives them understanding of the scripture. 
And they've spent all day thinking about what happened, what they've heard about from Mary. And Jesus is standing in the midst of them. And they got these guys coming with a report that they've seen him. And their eyes were opened. And he vanished out of their sight. And now he's there. And he shows them his hands and feet. And he says, touch me. And he talks to them. And they see him. And he eats before him. He eats before them. And now <laughs> he's going to breathe on them and give them the Holy Spirit. Give them the, mes the message that they're to take forth unto the world. Their message will save men or it will damn them. It will bring life to them or it will bring death to them. Now they have understanding. In 50 days, when the Holy Spirit comes in power on the day of Pentecost and He descends uh, like tongues of fire and sits upon each one of them, the 120 in the upper room, they're going to get the power to go out and witness to the gospel. Right now, they're getting the understanding of it. Right now, their cloudy minds are being cleaned off. And the, and the lack of understanding they, they have is being swept away. And things are becoming crystal clear. And over the next 40 days, as Jesus appears to them, and they see him, and Paul says 500 brother, brethren saw him at once, it's all going to become crystal clear to them. And then the Holy Spirit's going to descend again and give them the power to witness on the day of Pentecost. Acts 3, I'm sorry, Acts 1, verse 3 through 5 says, To whom he showed himself alive after his passion. So to these disciples, after his passion is his death. His, uh, it was passion and it was suffering. By many infallible proofs. So he showed himself uh, after his passion to his disciples by infallible proofs. I mean, they were convinced. This person is alive. We are not, uh, there's no doubt in our mind about it. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father. The promise is the Holy Spirit which you've heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That's what his promise was. Wait here. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Coming down as fire, speaking in tongues. And that day, 3,000 people got saved as Peter preached that message. Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. As he breathed on him, when they were locked in that room, they got understanding. As he sent the Holy Spirit down from heaven on the day of Pentecost, they got power to go out and witness. You'll be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's still going on today. The message that they laid down, the foundation that they put down, uh, of the Lord Jesus being the chief cornerstone and, and the, the writing of the New Testament scripture, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus is the chief cornerstone of that. Then in Acts 2, 1 through 4, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the power that's going to start the church off. This is uh, the running start that the church has. It began with a bang. It began with the Holy Spirit's descent and the power to witness to the world there. So... The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. But the wind, the Holy Spirit, gives understanding as he desires. He opens Lydia's heart. The road to Emmaus, their, their eyes were held, and then their eyes were opened. And in this room where they're locked in, Jesus breathes on them. And they receive the Holy Spirit. And their understanding is opened. And the reception of the Holy Spirit uh, gives understanding, and it goes hand in hand with the power to witness, to share the gospel, and the authority to do so. To forgive sins or to retain them. That's what happened to them. In the creation, God did this. He breathed into man the breath of life. Man sinned and died. And now, here comes the understanding back into them by the breath of the Lord Jesus. Jesus comes in power through His Holy Spirit uh, uh, to witness on the day of Pentecost. Well, I hope you'll trust in the Lord Jesus with all of your heart. Commit yourself to Him.
Commit yourself to read the scripture and understand who he is and to seek after him with your whole heart. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there. Then you can click on the playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this video, you can email me at all one word, Bible study, v by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study, verse by verse.